In this video, we're going to go through how to install Blockmons into prismatic cells. Here are some Blockmon M8s. The links that we're going to use and some of the standoffs to make it so that we can attach it to these large 460 amp hour prismatic cells. Now typically you can use bolts, but in this case we're going to use grub screws. And the advantage to grub screws is that they can be located and as we add this and the bus bars, it holds them in place rather than the accident of anything slipping or moving about. So here we go, we're adding a link in this case plus the standoff. So this is starting from most negative and working our way forward. So as we're progressing here, you can see that we're working from one to the next. And you'll notice here that we also have some insulation that we've wrapped between the links so that as much as possible we've used heat shrink to cover as much metal so that there is less likely for an accident and as you can see there we're still continuing to work our way around you'll notice that we're using a standoff and that's because in this particular case the cells have a a vent and that vent requires us to make sure that the block mon is above it and not bumping it because we don't want anything bumping the the block mon cell monitoring system at all all right, now this one here, the very first one, which is the negative, um, that's where we actually attach the block one. Now we're going to actually use a link on that and the standoff and use the block one from here. We attach the CMU connect to it as well. And the reason being is it keeps everything nice and neat and consistent across all the systems. So what you can see there is we start from the cell, we have the cell bus bar. From that, we go to a standoff onto the block one. From there, a washer, a spring washer, and then finally the screw. Now we're going to use a socket. We always wrap our sockets with insulation tape at all times to make sure that if anything goes wrong and it drops, we've got the best possible chance of not making a metal contact. Having said that, you don't want that to happen. So in this case, we're now attaching the block one cable. So this is just an eyelet that we're attaching again, the same usual washer and bolt to it. So we're bringing the eyelet underneath the block one so that it's out of the way and less likely to catch on anything. You'll notice here we've got slots with little clips on them so that we can handle this with the best possible form of cable management possible because a messy cabling loom is likely to end in an accident and we're talking about long term. So these systems are put together not to last for a couple of days but for very long periods of time and so we need to have it so that it's wired up and it's very tight and easy for us later on for when we need to support it. So in this case you'll notice that we actually take the communication cable from the four pin and we pull it underneath in through the slot and across to the next cell but we're pulling it against the system so we're on to the next block mon here we're connecting the negative across again putting the socket on to make sure it's tight you would have noticed there that we actually hold the block mon as we're doing it to make sure we don't put any negative pressure so as we're pushing in any cables or things we're always making sure that we're supporting the back of the block mon so that it's not stressing or flexing the board because that can cause it to fail again we're doing the red cable here underneath across a number of times before we finally plug in the connector so here we go we're going to the connector and you'll notice there that we're putting in the connector and supporting it you'll have noticed that the leds have been blinked as they were powered up where there's both a red and, an, and a green that come on for a short period of time the green then stays on for a long period of time to confirm that's powered and then once the communication starts the green led will go off and just blink occasionally Notice there that we're pushing that cable in underneath the bus bar as much as possible and trying to hide it so it's underneath so that it's not there for it to catch on anything. So looking down at it now, you'll see that as we're attaching it all and going from cell to cell, that we're just doing it in a nice neat process so that as it assembles, there is no loom looping about up high that could accidentally catch on any clothing or any tools that might brush past it. So we're slowly working through this process and there's a lot of them. I mean, there's 16 in this case, block bonds for a 48 volt system with lithium iron phosphate. So we're just working through the process cell by cell. Now we're getting towards the end here. So let's concentrate on that again. So in this case, we're bringing the cables underneath, across and onto the last two. And in doing so, it just allows us to make sure everything's nice and neat for us to finally return the loop where we've gone through from transmitting to receiving. So we're working our numbers up as each of the cell monitors is connected. So in this case, this is cell 15 that will be shown on the system and we connect it up. We will then take the four pin cable from this and bring it onto the last cell monitor. So we're just finally tightening this up, ready for us to work to the last one. In this last cell monitor is where we're going to do the return loop. Okay, so in this particular is the last one. So the positive power is what now returns back to the inverter and charges. So we're going to connect again our normal 
negative terminal for our block one, bring in the two pin to receive from it, and then just connect it on again, supporting the system. From here, we will then attach the four pin to it so that we're able to connect it back to the CMU. Now, in this case, we're just gonna connect the red wire temporarily to the positive to make sure there's communication. But after we've got this in place, we'll be connecting the large, thick, um, eyelet with the lug to make sure we connect it back to the inverter but for this just demonstration we'll just do this part first. So after we've completed the power so we can see that it's actually powered up we'll then take the 4 pin which is the transmission from the 16th cell monitor underneath and then back across to our CMU connect at the 2 pin and that is the return path for communication. Again, you'll see that we're just adjusting the cables here just to make sure that it's nice and tight and tidy. Now, for the last one, which is the first one, we're going to connect the two pin in to the very cell one. And then we've pulled out the red wire. And the reason we pulled out the red wire is leaving it loosely about is then prone for some sort of problem. So we pull it out of the actual four pin altogether and plug it into the four pin of the CMU. You certainly can leave it in, but it is far better off to eventually take it out so that it's nice and tidy. All right, now that we've got the CMU connected, we're gonna now plug it into the Watchmon 4. So in this case, we're just powering up the Watchmon 4 to make sure it's working. We can see there the red transmitting is happening down the bottom there at CMU. We've got the connection where it's working its way along. And as you can see there, there's the little blinking green LEDs as it's working its way through. And it's working its way up. We're up to about cell eight here, and we're working our way across. And look there, there's something's gone wrong at cell nine. And hang on, we can notice it here. We've accidentally forgotten to plug in the two pin. Without that two pin, the path of communication is not there. There. So as you can see, we've plugged it in. All of a sudden, the green blinking lights continue all the way across, and we can even see them here on the Watchmon 4. I've just pulled out another one from the um, Blockmon, and you can see there again that the Watchmon 4 has stopped communication. I plug it back in and it restarts. That's what it's all about, is trying to keep all these cables nice and tight, pulled against themselves so that it's going to work. So good luck with assembling your system, and see if you can follow our steps.